Experiencing your soul refreshed is like eating a berry burst ice cream. It's not just the sensation and the, the texture of the ice in your mouth that's refreshing, but it's the combination of that with the flavor of the berry, whether the strawberry or raspberry, gooseberry, gooseberry, maybe blueberry, cranberry, dark forest fruits. Uh, and, and as you're experiencing that entire flavor combined with the, the icy cool, you might even bite on a seed that just brings a explosion of sharpness from the fruit in that moment as well. And you have this experience of not only is your mouth happy, but your body is also really happy with this moment. Every person needs refreshing. And I recognize that we, we've come through a period of time that has been hard. Eh? It's, it's been demanding. It's had moments of intense workload or intense fear or, or intense loneliness for some, intense boredom for others. Um, and life sometimes is tough. And we read in the psalm here, in Psalm chapter 19, a psalm that talks about God's glory and his creation and how it all points to him and speaks of him and declares what's good. And, and we then get to verse 7 and it says that the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. Just a few weeks back, I went away for a few days with my wife, Stacey, and we just locally went down to the coast and it was a few days away. It was a different environment. It was a rest. It was enjoyable. Before going, I actually didn't feel that I needed it. I felt I could have pushed through and had another two or three months at this pace before I needed a break. And, and yet we went down and I came back so refreshed. But it's not all down to the change of scenery and the different environment and the, the change of routine. That's part of it. But the key reason I realized as I reflected on those days was that I spent time with God in a way where I aligned myself to him again, where I allowed him to speak into me, where I just was refreshed by his word and by his spirit. Um, and so it's, it's only in part the being in a different environment. It's aligning ourselves to who he is that I recognize brought about this refreshing time. This psalm obviously speaks about the words of God. It says about the instruction, the law, the, the testimony, the, the who he is. But all of that points to not just words on a piece of paper, but to his ways, to who God is, to his being. And it's alignment with his being uh, that is so key in the refreshing moment. And life takes it out on you. But we all recognize that we all need to be refreshed. There's something else as well, which is that replenishing your soul is key to life. Psalm 23, just a few Psalms later, is one of the most popular, most read, most memorable, most used. I think, as I, as I think about Hollywood, probably the most filmed Psalm or passage of scripture that exists uh, in, in the archives, it's, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters and he restores my soul. I mean, there's a reason there that, that David doesn't say he leads me by rivers of torrent water or rushing brooks. The, the still waters has something of a, a calm about it. It's peaceful to look at. It's peaceful to be around, even with whatever else is going on around. The scripture's very pointed of water, referring to the Spirit of God. And it's aligning ourselves to Him for life. Uh, it's replenishing your soul so that you can live. <laughs> I want to I just take a moment and 
uh, speak about the soul itself. Soul, the word soul in the Hebrew appears 750 and a few more times in the Old Testament. I mean, it's a lot. And it's always used to mean desire, uh, will, moral will, uh, moral action, emotion, being, and God <laughs> and his word is about his being. In the New Testament, the word soul is the word that we use in the English today for psyche. And Paul and Peter both use this word. Paul speaks of it a few times around emotion and life and the person themselves and their will. So very much in alignment. Peter uses it to, to speak about the wholeness of a man or woman's being. And replenishing your soul is key to living. I don't know if you've ever had a, uh, a bottomless ice cream. It's like a bottomless Coke or a bottomless lemonade where you, you buy it and you, 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 you've got that ice cream and once you've finished, you can have more. You don't need to ask. You haven't got to uh, pay for another one. Um, you are entitled to a refill. And I've been in environments where you do that yourself, where you just get up from your seat and you, you head on over and you, <laughs> you fill up that tub with the ice cream. I've also experienced it where you're in a restaurant and the waiter, the waitress is the one that brings it over to you. Doesn't matter which one of those environments it is, the, the, the fact is, is that you've paid for uh, a bottomless ice cream and you can have as much of it as you want. It's the kind of place that you might find me. <laughs> but God isn't one of these waiters that we click our fingers at and we say, come and replenish this. Uh, God isn't over there somewhere and we've got to go and find him to be able to get that replenishing of our souls. No. God is here. God is around us. God is available to us. And we haven't even got to ask. What we need to do is we need to come to him, to his being, and align ourselves, our being, with his being. Do you know, the best berries, the sweetest berries, come from the healthiest plants. I don't know if you've ever eaten a punnet of strawberries and perhaps you've picked the first one and as you're eating it you realize, mm, hang on a minute, there's something off here. And you hope that the rest in this box aren't tasting that way too. And then you realize that they do. But it's not because they've, 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 they've gone bad. Um, it's not because you've kept them too long. It's just there's something about them that just isn't quite right. It's probably because they've come from one of the uh, least best plants. There's a passage in Proverbs that says that the generous will prosper and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. In this I see that it, it's not about being in a place of seclusion or in isolation, it's actually about recognizing our place in our world and knowing that when we are refreshed and as we allow God to refresh us, to pour into us, as we come and align ourselves to his being, what happens is, is that others around us are also affected by this refreshing. And so it's almost like a, a double dose. God wants to refresh us. He wants to do something for me. He wants to do something for you. He wants to bring a refreshing experience and and, and, and knowledge and being to your soul. But he will also do that for you as you refresh others around you. It's, it's, a, different, it's a different currency. It's a different way of, of things happening. It is his kingdom way. And as you think about the flavor of the berry burst refreshing you, uh, I want you to, to think about those moments where you've needed refreshing at the most. And the answer to that 
and to the answer to the longing for that and the answer to the need for that is to come to him and align with his being and know not only the words in Psalm 19 and Psalm 23 and Proverbs 11, not only knowing those words, but knowing the God who is behind these words, the one who these words are pointing to, who desires to bring that refreshing to your soul. There's a verse in Matthew chapter 11. Uh, It's words that Jesus said, and they're very comforting. And I want to encourage you as we just perhaps wrap this up a little bit, is to take these words and apply them yourself. Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble and easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me. Do you know we can know that? We can know that today. We can know that tomorrow, every day of next week and next month and next year. And we've already recognized that life takes it out on you. That we don't have to push on and push on through uh, just for sake of it. We get to come and align ourselves to the God of all creation, of our universe, the one who is sovereign over all, and to Jesus who says, hey, I'm right here, come to me. And we can exchange this. So whether you're feeling empty, whether you're feeling tired, whether you feel like I felt before going on a break that I actually could push on a few, a few months more, um, however you are feeling in this moment, it's an opportunity to once again settle in your heart. Or maybe you're doing this for the first time. Settle in your heart, in your being. That God desires to refresh your soul. Let me just read a few other verses that Jesus says, which are invitation verses. John chapter 6, 37. Everyone who the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will never send away. John 7, 37. Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Revelation 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, let anyone who hears this say, Come. Let anyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life.